Episode 12, The Land on the Far Bank. That is an amazing haul. This guy fishes. And you better leave. You better go now. Run. Oh no, he's seen us. <laughs> he's coming over here now. God, he's just hanging out. Oh, Aslet speaks good English. Should have guessed. Okay, so it's an announcement of having Newt. He's just checking him out, giving him, giving him the good old up and down. He saw the abs and he respected. Is he rowing to Denmark? <laughs> I'm a little bit lost. Where is he going? Where are the elders? Ears, the ultimate ace in the hole. The one guy you want on your team, making the whole thing broken. Ragnar definitely knows how to make his presence felt. Constantly. Always. Very loudly. <laughs> the ear. Capital letters. Admittedly, that's amazing. I thought, like... His power was just hearing slightly, marginally better. That's actually great. They're moving it. They're moving it. Led by Thorkel, no doubt. Who's probably running at a sprint, judging by the fact that he doesn't do anything halfway. <laughs> Scouts? They have Thorical. That pretty much seals it. And then Thorical showed up. It's crazy how they established Thorical as this incredible beastly warrior to the point where even a crew as competent as Asclad is on the run and feels like prey. How did that happen? The end of days is coming anyway. We haven't seen Thorfinn or Knut yet this episode. Yeah, what exactly is he up to? I always have this feeling with Asklad. There's always another level, another layer. I didn't realize he was that old. So what then? He's still sprinting. He hasn't stopped sprinting this whole episode, Thorkel. He's out there somewhere, running at you in full speed, with a crazy look on his face. And when he catches up to you, he's gonna hit you with a tree really hard. That's so cute. <laughs> Why do they make that, that one elk super cute for no reason? We are prey. We are all Thorkel's prey. Everyone is following, putting their lives in the hands of Asklad and his gamble. Asklad always seems so confident, too. He's got something in mind. Are there even reinforcements coming? Was that just a ploy? I'm so confused. <laughs> wow. Just two people. Who are they exactly? Are they going to be any match for Thorical? Wow, an Asclad bows. Holy crap. Who are these people? Okay, it's more than just two. They really booked it, huh? They got here super fast. Are they going to fight or flee? They could theoretically board this boat, right? Ashley comes through once again. I'm guessing Thorkel will know what that means. I guess not. <laughs> I think it's up to Thorfinn. Got it. Thorkel's pretty well educated for a madman. But how did he manage to have that kind of connection? I guess he just gets around a lot. Definitely a backstory there. Oh, 
He's actually chilling. He's good. I can't wait for Knut to speak, honestly. I'm like so excited. Oh, there we go, finally. Uh, what? <laughs> catch, this, catch me this flying bird, please. So Asgard sort of revealed this whole thing about the end of days and Valhalla, but I still can't help but feel like it's more than that, and he has some final or big game plan, something big he wants to go after, but what what could be big enough and grand enough for someone who thinks at, at sort of this level? He definitely seems to enjoy what he's doing. I mean, he seems to take utility out of, of moments. We've seen him have moments of, of great pleasure, like when he was riding the dragon boat on land although i mean who wouldn't enjoy that he's very connected to the moment but he also seems sort of unfazed and unbothered by things that would just take other people out and i think that's part of what makes him a good leader and i don't think that you can have that sort of detachment without being focused on something much bigger or that you feel is much more much bigger or more significant and it could be just his reflections on death and the end of days and something like heaven but i have a feeling like he's going for something really big right now and this is for him an opportunity maybe his last big opportunity with the prince and he seems like he's already got the whole plan figured out hashed out from the beginning there he is this is my son, Thorfinn. I'm his daddy and he loves me. <laughs> He's just so likable. Does Thorfinn even want to kill him at this point? I mean, they just seem super close in their way, as much as Thorfinn is capable of that. Gratianus. Got it. I won't forget that. From who? Very strategic, very tactical. There's the story, and Asla had figured that out. Genius. Mm -hmm. Mommy, mommy, help me. Oh, what? Ragnar keeps getting dunked on <laughs> this whole series. Nobody wants to hear from him. I get no respect, I tell you. I like how this priest is still here. The prince doesn't exactly commandeer respect. I think I was fooled by the mask for a while. The mask just looked so cool. I was sure he was ready to do some, some real damage. But instead he was just, you know, kind of ready to walk around and make demands of Ragnar. Like catching birds. What are you going to buy with the gold? Now we're talking. It's snowing. <laughs> I mean, he's only going to consider booze valuable, so anything other than that he probably won't mention. Compared to liquor. Man's greatest friend. I'm skeptical. <laughs> Does he mean the love of a good drink? <laughs> That's real, really connected to the earth here. Two feet on the ground. This guy's literally floating in a cart. Well, we got a philosopher in the crowd. And that's how all the Vikings converted to Christianity. Thank you, Brady Enos. He's so innocent. What? In hindsight, what the hell were they thinking? Putting him, just leaving him there to take out London Bridge? That was never going to happen. That was never going to happen. With Thoracle, no less. That just seems like Sven wanting to take out his own son. It's like, if he's going to be useless, he might as well be useless and dead. What was that flash of Thor? Keeping your expectations low? Everyone's got their legends. What's he hearing? Are they catching up? I mean, the prince would be a valuable tool. A decoy? Are they being surrounded? Thorfinn senses it too. This was the danger of crossing on land. 
There they are. This situation is very familiar, too, to Thorfinn. And Astolite, where have we been in this situation before? But now they're on the same side. Just can't spend five seconds without destroying something. The situations are reversed for Astolad. Thorfinn is an interesting situation now, too. This is where he was in the boat when Astolad was attacking and killed his father. This time he's a lot more capable. Yeah, this is familiar territory. I don't think this is gonna go how this invading group wants it to go. I mean, it sort of can't, right? It's gonna end up being a clash between this crew and Thorical. That's gonna be the most satisfying thing by far. Although, I guess something could still happen in this attack. It's so great how this show managed to flip so many things on its head from the beginning. You know, looking back to some of the first episodes with Thorfinn, this poor innocent kid watching his father die a heroic death at the hand of this crew that he's, that we're all now on the same side with. And we're also sort of now the underdogs fleeing from an army of really just one man who is your father's friend. So you never know. You never know what to expect. I mean, at this point, the whole Thorfinn Astlet duel doesn't feel like anything resembling reality. That doesn't seem relevant anymore. It just seems like habit. I don't know exactly how this arc is going to conclude, but it is definitely gearing up to be something action-packed and extremely exciting. <laughs>